I just want to mention before we get going here that uh, the underwriter for today's episode is Anchor Podcast Platform. Uh, they're the free podcast people. They help anybody who wants to get their own podcast going to help them get it going for free. Doesn't cost anything. Uh, you can find them at anchor.fm or on their on their app, the Anchor app. Their core mission really is the democratization of audio so that audio can be used by anybody who wants to use it to reach people with their own voice. And they don't charge a dime uh, for this. They've helped me. I'm grateful to them uh, for doing that and grateful to them for supporting my voice uh, so that you can hear it. This is Rumble with Michael Moore. I'm Michael Moore, and we are coming to you right now through the emergency podcast system. Uh, we are recording a special edition of Rumble uh, regarding the news. The Washington Post uh, reported late on Friday that Senator Bernie Sanders has been briefed by the intelligence community that the Russian government is meddling in our election once again, but in this case, uh, to quote, help Bernie Sanders. Um, now, the headline did not include the quote marks around the word help, but it should, and I want to explain now that we can finally talk openly about this whole disinformation campaign that's been going on for some months now. And it turns out that uh, Senator Sanders was briefed by the intelligence uh, officials a month ago. So uh, he has known this, but he had to keep it quiet because it was a classified briefing from intelligence and therefore was not allowed to tell the public. He sort of alluded to it in the debate the other night, the debate in Nevada, uh, where they were going after the other candidates and the moderators were going after Bernie because of this whole so-called Bernie bro thing, that there are these people online who are viciously attacking uh, the other candidates. And uh, they're referred to as Bernie bros. Like there's this, there's this unit of the campaign or there's, or there is, as uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, accused Bernie of, well, you know, even though you're not in charge of these so-called followers of yours, uh, you are responsible uh, because you attract this kind of filth. That's essentially was Pete's point. Uh, and therefore, there must be something wrong with you that you are attracting these angry, uh, vicious tw uh, Twitter people. And of course, there was a story in the Times and other stories, uh, you know, a lot of them being pushed by the campaigns of some of the other candidates. That there are these uh, Bernie bros that are doing these awful, awful things. And he, Joe Biden this week said they've been issuing death threats uh, online. And um, I think each of the candidates actually weighed in trying to take a pound of flesh out of Bernie because of the behavior of these so-called supporters of his online. Now, I and others who've been out on the campaign trail with Bernie have felt, and I think all of us through our own sources started hearing things uh, some time ago that, that this whole, this whole online hate uh, was something that had been invented and encouraged by some outside forces didn't know quite who was doing it, but it had all the uh, markings of bots uh, who uh, a lot of these came from accounts with people that, you know, so-called people you don't know cause they, it's all hidden. Uh, but they are, many of these accounts have uh, little or few or no followers or are following nobody uh, or they've just been recently established as accounts. Uh, all of it very, very suspicious. And of course, Bernie's point is, is that, is that the people that, yes, the people that follow Bernie, um, I'd say many of them, most of them, us, are very passionate about our belief that uh, in all the things that Bernie believes in, uh, whether it's issues of war and peace, whether it's issues of income inequality, uh, uh, women's rights, uh, mass incarceration, go down the whole list of things. We feel very strongly about these things and we 
like I think a lot, maybe the majority, I would say, certainly the majority of the American people have had it. And they're angry. They're angry that they're living from paycheck to paycheck. They're angry that they um, don't know if their kids are going to be able to go to college. They're angry that they got sick and now they have these co-pays and these deductibles that they didn't. They thought they, well, they thought, well, I've got Obamacare. Well, yeah, we have the, you have the bronze plan. So you got a big deductible and, you know, it, it, uh, people are upset. We live in a country of tens of millions of people who are very upset. That's different than this, this concocted, invented uh, Bernie bro thing. Now, of course, every campaign has crazies. Every campaign has supporters who are crazy and will say and do things that are crazy. But one thing I noticed on the campaign trail while crisscrossing Iowa and, and uh, New Hampshire in these last few weeks is that there's one particular thing that when you do have an organized element of thugs who want to um, pretend that they are supporting one candidate and trying to disrupt the others, one of the hallmark things that they do is show up at the other candidates' events and try to disrupt them. They stand up and they try to shout them down. They heckle them. Uh, they try to shut down their free speech. And in all my time in this last month, in these states that are having the early primaries and caucuses, I have not seen or heard of or witnessed on the evening news a single Sanders supporter or group of supporters going to a campaign event for Joe Biden or Elizabeth Warren or Mayor Pete and trying to disrupt it, trying to shut it down trying to um, behave in a manner that Bernie Sanders would never approve of. None of us would. Where are they? What, see, if you had a really, if you had a real crazy group of so-called Bernie bros, one of the things they definitely would be doing is trying to F up other candidates' events. Not happening. So, you're kind of almost waiting for it to happen because you keep hearing about these Bernie bros. When will they surface? When will they come out from behind the anonymity on Twitter? And then they, and then they don't. And then you begin to see and you begin to think, well, of course they don't because they don't exist. Again, not saying that there aren't, you know, crazy wackadoodle people who are supporters of each of the candidates. But there is no movement there's no organized effort. There's no um, wink, wink, turn your head the other way as, as the thuggery of your campaign. They go out to, to undo the other campaigns. You never see it. It only exists in the digital atmosphere of the ether of the internet. Who are they? Who's been doing this? This is what many of us have been wondering for months now. The fact that the mainstream media a week or two ago decided to resurrect the story and, and go full out on the existence of the non-existent Bernie bro movement. It was just, it's stunning that they reported stories like this um, with very minimal anecdotal evidence of, of the, you know, few people who are, you know, behaving in with bad manners, behaving like a 12 year old operating from some crazy hate that nobody wants to be associated with and how quickly supporters of the other candidates picked up on this, how much they wanted to help fan the flames of this story. Oh yes, Bernie, Bernie and his bros, Bernie and his awful supporters. Look what they're doing. Look what they're saying. I don't know. I can't believe if the if the reverse had been true that I or others would have believed it if, if say, Senator Warren's supporters all of a sudden started acting in this weird-ass manner. Again, one or two, three or four, yes, okay, every camping. But, boy, they just latched right onto it. They wanted to just clobber Bernie with us. And now today, last evening here, 
end of the day Friday, it comes out, Russia. Russia trying to interfere. Russia meddling with the Sanders campaign. Not to, let's get this straight to, not to help Bernie. Not to help Bernie because they want Bernie. They want Trump. Or what they actually, what they really want is chaos. They want our American system, our electoral system to collapse again like it did in 2016. That's what they're really out for. And we should know this. We should know the MO because we kind of invented it in the 20th century. We interfered with so many elections around the world. The CIA, we put up fake candidates. We funded actual candidates in other countries' elections. We put out propaganda. We, 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 um, we bought off journalists. I mean, this, this is a whole history of this. I'm, I'm sure for many of you, especially older people, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Um, you know, we helped to overthrow democratically elected leaders in Iran and Guatemala, Chile. We did it through propaganda. We did it through military intervention. We helped to stage coups. We participated in assassinating the leader of South Vietnam before we then really threw, you know, half a million troops into that country, many of them to die. No, no, we're the pros at this. So <laughs> Russia, uh, a young country, uh, the Russia of, of the uh, late 20th and early 21st century, and they don't really quite know how to do it yet, but they've got it down. They're very good. And they've got the, the uh, digital part of this down. And they succeeded in 2016. Uh, succeeded only in the sense that they, they had an impact. And yet, no matter what they threw at Hillary, she still beat Trump by 3 million votes. This doesn't get said often enough that Hillary beat the Russians. She beat Putin and got 3 million more votes in spite of everything that he and his GRU, the old KGB, what they did to her. And so now they're doing it again in this election. We can all see why they want Trump. He, Trump loves Putin. He loves a strong man. But one of the ways to help Trump is to make sure that the one candidate that we have heard Trump on tape, thank you, Lev, Lev and Igor, Giuliani's associates, tape recorded the call with Trump where he said he was relieved that Hillary did not choose Bernie as her running mate. Trump on the tape saying that that would have been a much, much tougher road had Bernie been running with Hillary. It's clear that from Trump's own mouth that he fears Bernie Sanders because in part, Bernie is speaking to much of the working class of this country that Trump pretended to speak to when he convinced them to vote for him in 2016. Not so easy this time, Trump, because you've got a real hero of the working class. You have somebody from the working class that is going to defeat you. And just in just yesterday's, they did a head to head poll, like who would win if it, uh, the Emerson poll, who would win? If it was, um, you know, Bernie versus Trump, Elizabeth versus Trump, Pete versus Trump. And this has been true consistently in poll after poll. Bernie beats Trump. He either beats him by the most or in this last one, actually, this is kind of a scary one. This poll shows them all losing to Trump and only Bernie, only Bernie beats Trump and not by a lot. 51, 49. So we have our work cut out for us here. This is no... This is no game over yet. We have a lot of work between now and November 3rd. But um, Trump and the Russians, the last thing they want is Bernie Sanders as president. And as soon as this was announced today, uh, yesterday, well, this is, I'm recording this late Friday night. So you may be listening to this on Friday night, but more than likely you're hearing this on Saturday morning. As soon as uh, the story leaked to the Washington Post, uh, Bernie Sanders was very clear, looked right in the camera and told Putin, I'm coming after you. When I'm president, you're done with this stuff. You will not interfere in our elections. The exact opposite 
of how Trump responded just a day or two earlier when it was revealed how much the Russians are interfering with this year's election. In fact, here's how Trump responded. Not only mocked the whole thing, called it fake news. Um, he was upset to learn that his deputy uh, director of, uh, of, of national security, McGuire, director of national intelligence, had gone and met with the intelligence committee in Congress, Democrats and Republicans, and told them that the Russians are interfering again in this year's election. And they're interfering in order to see that Trump is elected. And Trump was furious when he found out that Adam Schiff sat in the room and got this information from his, his director of national intelligence and immediately fired him. And he left 24 hours later. Yesterday he was gone. And Trump appointed as the interim director, one of his cronies, one of his, uh, uh, you know, bundlers of, of campaign contributions. He's a part of that group called the Trump loyalists. So they, you, you are issued a, what's called the Trump card. You're the, you know, it means you're the, you're the most loyal of the loyalists to Trump. If you have a Trump card, I'm not making this up. And, and so this guy Grinnell, who's been our ambassador to, to Germany is now in charge of our intelligence with zero intelligence experience. So that's how pissed off Trump was that, that the Democrats were told of this and the public was informed. Bernie, the exact opposite reaction. Bernie, first of all, you know, he's like, oh my God, these uh, centrist Democrats, as soon as this news came out, they were just like, they were hyperventilating. They were so overjoyed to hear, yes, see, I told you, the Russians want Bernie, see? The Russians want Bernie. They went nuts yesterday afternoon online. Many of them had to take it down later as the more and more of the news came out that it wasn't really that they, they certainly they don't want Bernie. They wanted to quote, help him by having these fake accounts and doing all this bot work so that they could make it look like the Bernie campaign um, was trying to create uh, divisiveness and hatred amongst Democrats, which would then throw the whole democratic primary season into chaos and get them screaming at each other on the stage like they did a couple of nights ago. Uh, this is like music to Putin's ears, right? Um, but that's, that's the bomb they wanted to throw into the Sanders campaign. Make it, create these accounts of supporters helping Bernie. But the effect, of course, would be to have Democrats hating Bernie, the public being very upset that Bernie's campaign or his supporters are doing these and saying these awful things about other Democrats and, um, and help and help out Trump. This will help Trump to have the Democrats in disarray. What also will help Trump is for Bernie not to win the primaries because Trump is more afraid of Bernie than any of the other candidates. Why, why is that? And what, now that's always not been the truth. I mean, the, the truth is, is that, you know, a year ago, it was Joe Biden. That's why he went through the whole Ukraine thing and risked his presidency to go after Hunter Biden. But it became clear to Trump and the uh, Republicans and the Russians that uh, Biden uh, was not going to make it this year. And uh, in the same way that the Democrats started to pivot to other centrists like Mayor Pete or Amy Klobuchar, the Russians pivoted <laughs> to, to um, okay, we've... <laughs> You can just see them sitting around there, the, the Putin and the, the GRU, that's the, you know, the old KGB uh, chief. You know, Putin's like my asset in the White House, Trump, codename Golden Bear, is very worried about this Bernard Sanders. Ooh, is that his name, Bernard? Ber Bernie? Bernie Sanders, Sanders, Sanderstein, right? No, just Sanders. Oh, okay. Trump, Trump is worried that that this Bernie might win. What can we do? What can we do? <laughs> the GRU guy is going. Oh, I know exactly what to do. <laughs> we create Bernie Bros. We create Bernie. We create all these fake accounts. We invent all these American voters. 
say and do awful things against the other Democrats. Get people hating Bernie. Bernie lose, Trump win. Putin's like, ooh, I like that idea. I wish I thought of it. And the GRU guy goes, oh, you did, boss. You did. It is your idea. And Putin goes, yes, it is my idea. <laughs> you, that's my rendering of probably what happened there at the Kremlin that day. Uh, so now, so now, all the suspicious, all of you who have been thinking the same thing I've been thinking, and then me started to hear and see things out on the campaign trail from my own sources um, that there was something very fishy going on here and how quickly the other, some of the other candidates wanted to run with it against Bernie, wanted to create and participate in the Russian lie. That's even more sad, isn't it? That the other candidates could be so easily manipulated by a foreign power to, to go all in, to hop in, to join in on the Bernie bro conspiracy. Wow. Man, I know there's so many episodes of the Manchurian candidate you could write about this election, right? About Trump. Oh my God. You know, they really hoped that this would work. But a lot of you, I've heard from you who are listening to this, you felt something wasn't right either, right? Because, because first of all, okay, let's say you're for Bernie. Um, you, well, you know, you haven't behaved that way. <clears throat> Again, you're passionate about these issues, but you don't shit all over somebody for it. You don't act in an aggressive, semi-violent sounding manner. No, no, there's nobody. I'm telling the people, you, you know that. And you know, and you know what? You can't think of anybody, you know that supports Bernie, that behaves like that. You haven't seen on the news the Bernie bros going to Elizabeth's speeches or to Mayor Pete's events and trying to shut it down, trying to harass and stop their freedom of speech. You know, that's the thing. I'm so, <laughs> the Russians are such assholes and so, and so weak in their execution. This is, a, again, let me remind you, Hillary outsmarted Putin and won by 3 million votes. So, so the, the Russians, they, they, they create these bots on Twitter and they do these things and, and they can't even organize one or two, one or two Igors, five Igors, 10 Igors to show up at a, at a Warren rally with sticks in their hands and looking like they're going to break it all up. Come on, Russians, you got to go all the way. You just can't lay around on, in, in your rooms and do these fake Twitter things. You got to show up. You see, in this day and age, if we can't see it and touch it, it's mm, maybe not real. And you didn't go all the way. You can go all the way. And now this. And now we know, Bernie knows from these intelligence officers what you've been trying to do. It was amazing uh, yesterday here, Friday afternoon, near a tandem from the Center for American Progress, which is about nothing about progress, but just staying in the middle or leaning to the right. <laughs> right away, hopping right on this. Some of the commentators I saw on cable news hopping right on the sea. They want to, the Russians are for Bernie, <laughs> which makes kind of no sense, right? If they're for Trump, you got to pick one because they're the exact opposite of each other politically and their attitudes toward oligarchs and dictators, very different. Trump wants to be one. Trump thinks he is one. Bernie, Bernie's out to destroy the oligarchy to destroy totalitarianism. Bernie is an American citizen who lives and has lived his entire life with the pain that comes from the fact that many members of his family were executed by a totalitarian regime. He never talks about this very much other than to say that 
it had a profound impact on him. His dad is an immigrant being able to escape Poland. And yet his dad's the rest of his family all gone. It's not like the rest of us, is it? You know, your mom's family, your dad's family. You know, they have brothers and sisters. They're your aunts and uncles, right? Most of us have aunts and uncles, which means most of us have cousins. Think about that. What, what, what's that like for Bernie to not have cousins from his dad's side? To not have those aunts and uncles and those grandparents because they were all gassed, annihilated. Bernie is the antithesis of totalitarianism. It's why he's fought it his entire life, and he fights it in all forms, whether it comes from Wall Street, whether it, it comes from the oppression of people who work for a living, of women who are still second-class citizens, and the only reason is because of their gender. For black and brown people, they, they, they re <laughs> I love how they, they leaked this, they released this, and they tried to spin it. These centrist, moderate, conservative, corporate Democrats <laughs> immediately tried to spin it against Bernie on the eve of the Nevada caucuses released just hours before people in Nevada, after they wake up in the morning, are going to caucus. Bernie, way ahead in the polls. Bernie with polling 40% of Latino voters. And the news yesterday morning of Bernie catching up and, and being even now with Biden nationwide with black voters. They see the runaway train. In fact, I, I heard one of the commentators, one of the pundits call it that. Bernie is on a runaway train and now there, nobody can catch him. That's why at the debate the other night, um, when they asked each of the candidates, would they support the candidate that got the most votes? When they go to the convention this summer. Will they get behind the one who got the most votes from the American people? A simple question, right? Democracy. <laughs> Not one of them. Not one of them said that they would support that. They want to go to the convention and have a broker convention. They want to have a backroom convention. They want to have the super delegates vote. The super delegates who nobody voted for in any of the states. All the old party hacks are going to get to have their say on the second ballot or the third ballot, and they're going to find they're going to get the party hack that they want, not the person the people voted for. And they all stood on that stage and said that they that they <laughs> would not support the candidate who got the most votes. Wow. Well, the good news of that is, is on Wednesday night, the other five candidates um, um, announced that they were conceding, that they've already lost the election to Bernie Sanders. Only Bernie said he obviously would, would uh, support the idea of whoever has the most votes because it looks like that's what's happening. Because right now he has the most votes, we're only two states into this, but there'll be another one here today and, uh, and next week in South Carolina and then Super Tuesday where there's 14 states, including California and Texas. So, yeah, yeah. Um, by saying that, those other candidates said that we think we're going to lose. Here's our white flag. Now let's get behind the old idea of, of the brokered convention. Broker, meaning the power brokers, decide who the next president will be. So this news of Russia comes out less than 24 hours before this caucus vote. Boy, they really don't want Bernie. The powers that be do not want Bernie. Um, listen, I, I, I think that I want to take a moment too and just say a couple of things about the other candidates that I really liked watching this week. I mean, Elizabeth Warren, God bless her. She put a, a, a stake in the heart of the Bloomberg campaign. I mean, that was brilliant. And then again, last night, uh, he released three of the, we don't know. There's, we know that there's at least 40 women with sexual harassment or abuse or discrimination complaints against Bloomberg or his company. 
We know that. It's probably more than 40. He's released three of the women yet. <laughs> Last night, he said three of the women. I, I, I negate the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement. They can say whatever they want. Elizabeth Warren made that happen. She took him down. She put a fork in him, and he was done. I don't know how Bloomberg survives this, but I mean, I know money can buy just about anything. So we'll see what, what happens with that. But uh, boy, she was brilliant. And Joe Biden backed her up. Joe Biden, the, the Mr. Mr. Touchy Feely, smell the hair, bite the finger. Joe Biden was right there. Release these women. Let them speak. Tell us what you did to them. That's very cool that he did that. Pete and Amy mixing it up like that. It was like, it was a bit sad, actually. Uh, he's supposed to be the smart one. Looked pretty stupid and sad. And, um, you know, she uh, she was upset. But, um, look, I've said this from the beginning, even when we had 24 candidates on the stage, um, with the exception of, of the person who bought his way on, didn't play by the rules and shouldn't be there, uh, every single one of these candidates have had something to offer. They've said something that's really good. Um, they've stood for things. Um, uh, we're all going to get together. We're going to unite and we're going to remove Trump. Um, so rest assured that that is going to happen. And um, in the meantime, the, the pundits, the pundit class, I just want to read you, I want to read you a, a tweet sent out by one of the deans of the pundit class, Walter Isaacson, former editor of Time Magazine, um, historian, biographer, professor of history. He was the chair of CNN back in the early 2000s. As soon as the story breaks on Friday late afternoon that the Russians are, quote, trying to help Bernie, um, he jumps right on Twitter and, and this is what he said. If Bernie Sanders secures the Dem nomination 11 days from now, as is possible, the Russians will have succeeded in hacking our democracy. I suspect that the Russians would then work to elect Sanders over Trump. An hour or two later, once people started to dig into this a little more as to what the so-called Russian help really was about, which was to make it look like they were helping, but actually hurting Bernie through these aggressive bot tweets and all this other stuff that, you know, look, we don't, we don't know the whole story right now. So I'm going to just keep to myself what I know and what I think I know because I've been around this block before. I've lived in this country long enough to see when this stuff happens, what's really going on. Within a couple of hours, many of the pundits were backing off and actually praising Bernie for coming down so aggressively on Putin and warning him that when he's president, Putin's ass is cooked. So, so credit to those who backed off. And Walter Isaacson and others started deleting their tweets. Nira Tandon deleted hers. Walter Isaacson deleted his. But you can see how quickly they wanted to pounce on Bernie and to use it, especially to use it to try to, in this sort of modern, modern day red baiting. Oh yes, the Russians behind the socialist. <laughs> no. No, I think we know. I think we know. I think we know what this is. And it's very different from what they're really doing to help Trump. Trump has been very, very good to the Russians. They know it, and they don't want this to change. And they read the same polls we read, the same polls that show that Bernie is the one who beats Trump. And now today's, this yesterday's, this last poll He's the only one of these six 
Democrats that's shown to beat Trump. In that same poll, even in a, it showed a head-to-head with Bernie and each, like it said, they asked the question of the voters, if all the other Democrats dropped out and there was just Bernie and Bloomberg left or just Bernie and Warren or Bernie and Biden, who would you vote for? And in each head-to-head of Bernie versus the Democrat, Bernie won. And with Bloomberg, it was Bernie 57%, Bloomberg 37%. Beating Bloomberg, if it was just the two of them on the ballot, by a whopping 20 points, which is just a little reminder I want to give. When you hear the pundits talk about how, oh yeah, but if you add up all the votes of Biden and Klobuchar and Pete and Elizabeth, if you add them all together, oh my God, it's so much more than Bernie. Bernie's only getting like 30%. They're getting 70%. (laughs) That's not how it works. And and nobody knows that more so than Donald J. Trump because I'll I'll, I'll post this on, on my social media over the weekend of showing the different primaries that Trump won back in 2016. I'll show you, I'll show you, uh, uh, New Hampshire, um, Michigan. Uh, what other ones do I have here? Kentucky. Um, you know, I'll just, I'll show you a mix of primaries where Trump, Trump got in the late twenties, like 28%, uh, 30 to 33%. That's how he won. He came in first by winning all these primaries with around 30% of the vote. Who got the other 60 to 70%? Jeb Bush, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, John Kasich. Um, Yeah, if you added all them together, they were like 60 or 70% of the vote and Trump was 30. You see, that's not how it works. When When they all started to drop out, people wanted to be behind the winner. They wanted to be behind the person who was most likely to win. And so Trump picked up those people's votes. It's wrong to hear these pundits uh, to say to you that Bernie still has a minority of votes. It's only because that same poll also asked, they asked who's your second choice and the, and the number one second choice candidate for Biden voters was Bernie Sanders. So, um, be careful with the stuff that you hear, that you read. Be a critical thinker about it. Um, look up, look deeper, look into it. Um, I don't think most of you listening to me were ever fooled by these bots, the, the so-called fake, this Bernie bro thing. Jeez, I mean, traveling, traveling with Bernie Sanders He is a loving soul. He's got his kids with him. He's got his grandkids with him. Um, He shoots hoop with him. He shoots. He he is. um, We went went to this one event and there wasn't room for all all of us others who were traveling with him. Myself and uh, Ben and Jerry and uh, Nina Turner. there was only room for like a, f- a few seats that were left at this event, this Democratic Party event. And um, and he wanted, to, he wanted his family there, not his campaign manager, not his deputy campaign manager. No offense, Foz and Amir and all of you. You all knew it, right? You already knew what he was going to do. He, he'd rather be with his family. And we, and we were all like, yes, and his family this family went and sat with him at this thing. Love and compassion. So much of his speech, he keeps using these words. I never see it. I never see it in the sound bites on TV. They like the Larry David uh, caricature. So whenever they can show that, they do. <laughs> okay, I get, I'm down for the humor. But uh, my friends, um, these things that where people have tried to go after him. And now that, now that we know, we know that the Russians, we knew the Russians were involved. The fact that they were, their message was then enabled by other Democrats, the old school corporate Democrats that want Bernie out of this race. They pushed the Russian storyline. Wow. 
Everybody has to wise up right now. Or we're not going to have a fair election. We're not going to know what the American people really want. We must resist this. And everybody who's a Sanders supporter must resist it whenever you see anything odd that's going on in trying to bring down Mayor Pete or Elizabeth or Amy. We have to stick together in this. You know, whether whether it's the totalitarian nature of Wall Street and corporate America or whether it's the totalitarian leaders of Russia or wherever it's coming from, we have to be smart enough to see it, resist it, fight it, and stick together. That's my promise. That's my commitment. I think most of you will join with me in that. Just as I was finishing recording this um, emergency podcast here, I wanted to get this out to you right away, especially for people in Nevada, before you vote uh, today, I wanted you to hear the truth about this story. But just as I was sitting here, this thing uh, came across on my phone, and I just want to—I want to pull this up here and um, read this to you. Um, this is from the LA Times. A story that's just probably just—they got off the wire. Here's the headline: Twitter is suspending seventy pro. Bloomberg accounts, citing platform manipulation. Wow, I'm just reading through this. Bloomberg's presidential campaign has been experimenting with novel tactics to cultivate an online following, or at least the appearance of one. Wow, I'm just reading through this here. Um, So Bloomberg and his people have hired hundreds and hundreds of temps. Temps. What do, what do they do? What do they do? They call manpower. They get they get have hundreds of temps, and then they have them set up these these Twitter accounts in their names. Essentially, these are fake accounts, and then they give them things to tweet out against Bernie, against the other candidates, or for Bloomberg. And they call, oh my God, they get the, the, the job description, the name they give these temps who are doing these fake Twitter accounts, they're deputy field organizers, deputy, deputy field. Oh my God. They receive $2,500 a month to do nothing, but what are they doing? Just sitting there at home tweeting and promoting the former New York mayor's candidacy. Unbelievable. Look at this. And so the LA Times, they started, you know, checking into whose accounts these were and, and how much they're just, they're just repeating, they're cutting and pasting the same stuff. And this violates, you know, Twitter has a very hard core, you know, thing to prevent 2016 from happening again. And, and so Twitter has gotten the hammer out and brought it down on the Bloomberg campaign, suspending these accounts that are there to create the illusion that there's a groundswell of support for Mayor Bloomberg. Oh, my goodness. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, boy. So, essentially, uh, if I could just sum that up, uh, we have an American oligarch in the name of Michael Bloomberg using KGB, GRU, Russian tactics online. Twitter caught it and Twitter shut him down. Just here, just this last night. Wow, right now. Boy, see, that's what I mean about being vigilant. That's what I was just saying. We all have to pay attention to this. And every not just the not just the Bernie campaign, but Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, Joe Biden, Mayor Pete. All of us have got to be together on this. Bloomberg, no, I'm sorry. He's not part of us. <laughs> He's the interloper. The rules were broken. He had no right on that stage. They wouldn't break the rules for Cory Booker. They wouldn't break the rules for Kamala Harris. They wouldn't break the rules for Julian Castro. 
the Democratic Party had an all-white stage once again because they break the rules for this for the billionaire, the ninth richest man in the world, one of our oligarchs. Yes, this is this is the vigilance that's required by all of us. Don't be fooled by any of this. Um, I'm going to sign off uh, because I want to get this out to you. Um, I'm putting this up as part of our special emergency podcast system. Uh, we do this whenever we need to, uh, to get something out to you right away. Um, I so appreciate you um, uh, supporting this podcast. I, I didn't, I failed to mention earlier this week that we surpassed our 4 millionth download. We're on our way to 5 million. We're already halfway there this week. Um, we're only two months old. We just, we just hit the two month mark a couple days ago, um, with rumble. And I, I'm, well, I'm very grateful. I'm glad to be part of this with you. Um, regardless who you support for president, get out there, get involved, get active. This is the time to do it. Make your voice heard. Um, we've got a great group of people uh, that are running and, um, and we have to make sure that we have a fair and legit democratic election, small D democratic. And, um, and I invite everybody to be part of that. Um, I also want to thank anchor there. There are like our main, uh, underwriter and supporter and sponsor of what we do. Thank you. Anchor Inc. Uh, these are the free podcast people. You can find them at anchor.fm. They've got an app. Um, you want to do your podcast, do your podcast. You can do it with them. This is open to everybody. And Anchor, these are the people who have been helping me, and um, they will help you too. So thank you to them, and um, I'll be back at you here uh, possibly over the weekend uh, with my next uh, official uh, podcast. Uh, but in this case, uh, this will this will do it for episode 40. Wow. Episode 40. Um, I am glad I decided to do this this year. I so appreciate your feedback. Please write comments in the comments section of this on the platform uh, site, or you can just send it, uh, send it to me, post it on, so on my social media on Twitter. It's MM Flint. It's Michael F. Moore on Instagram. On Facebook, it's also MM Flint. That's it for tonight, That and that is the end of uh, this episode of Rumble on the Emergency Podcast System. This is Michael Moore. Have a good day.